Hey everyone, welcome back to another Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series review. Today we'll be taking a look at the currently smallest figure in the line, the Zuni Ceratops. This little figure retails for $29.99, which makes it the most inexpensive figure in the series. And I'll leave a link to Creative Beast Studios if you would like to purchase this figure for yourself. So before we take a closer look at this figure, let's just go over the packaging really quick. It comes in the standard Beast of the Mesozoic packaging. You have a nice sleeve with the artwork of the Zuni Ceratops. On the front, the sleeve is removable if you want to slide it off the packaging. And then turn around to the side, you have a nice logo of Beast of the Mesozoic with the silhouette of the Triceratops. And then on the back, you have some facts about Zuni Ceratops and also the checklist for the rest of the Wave 1 Ceratopsian. And just like all the other figures in the line, you get a really nice collector card of the same artwork that is on the packaging. And same thing on the back, you get some facts about Zuni Ceratops. So enough about the packaging, let's take a closer look at this figure. So let's start off with a nice 360 degree view of the Zuni Ceratops. You'll notice the color pattern is quite striking on this figure. David used real life animals for inspiration for the color patterns on this series. He used amphibians and lizards in the Zuni Ceratops pattern is modeled after the five line skink it has the classic blue tail that five line skinks are known for and obviously the five line pattern along the back the main body is a different mixtures of brown which look really great you have a little bit of white mixed in on the side of the legs and stomach and then when you get to the head you have this bright orange and red and blue mixed in it makes for a really striking looking display and i absolutely love the color pattern and paintwork are fantastic on this figure so let's do a couple quick measurements on this figure before we take a closer look. This figure is 9 inches on the dot from the tip of the beak to the tip of the tail and about 3.5 inches tall to the top of the frill. So Zuni Ceratops in real life maxed out at about 11.5 feet long. So I'll put this figure nicely in that 116 scale, which is close enough to 118 scale for me. So let's pull this figure in for a closer look and look at some of the finer details. You know, on all these figures, the paintwork is absolutely impeccable. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And look at all that fine scale detail on the frill. You have that bright red and orange mixed in with the blue. It's such a striking appearance. And just the paintwork is just pretty much perfect. It does have that, you know, hand-painted look, which I do appreciate, but just... The amount of colors and washes and dry brushing is truly amazing on these figures. Then going down to the beak and the uh, rough patch where the nose horn would be is painted in a brown color. The brow horns are done in almost a khaki color. You have a nice dark wash over it. And then you got some more blue and yellow mixed in on the side. And then you have some black, I mean, uh, chocolate brown markings on the lower jaw. And then opening up the mouth, you can see there's some pink for the gum, gum tissue. And it's kind of tough to pick up on camera. Let's see if we can get in there. You can actually see there are teeth sculpted on the bottom and upper jaw of this figure. The nostril is nicely sculpted. The eye is painted orange with a black pupil. And then going down to the body, you can see that nice five-lined uh, skink pattern beautifully replicated on this figure. They have that nice blue on the tail. And then going down to the legs, you have some white mixed in with this dark chocolate brown dry brush and then going down to the feet you can see the first three claws in the feet are painted in gray and then turn the figure over it's a nice cream coat on the bottom you have a nice dark wash going over there bringing out all that scale detail and then going down to the hind legs the hind legs are really well done same thing i love all the texture on these figures they feel so good in hand it's very tactile feel to them and then going down to the hind feet you see same thing the toe claws are painted in with a dark gray paint. So all in all, the paint scheme on the figure is really striking and I definitely think the five line skin pattern works really, really well on this figure. So let's go over the articulation really quick. The mouth can open up that far and that's the far as it can close. Like I said, my one tiny critique is that the beaks don't really close flush together. You kind of get this half open uh, look with the mouth, but that's like literally the only critique I can find. On these figures, you do have rotation at the head. You get some up and down movement also. And then the neck joint can also ro get some rotation with that. So you can get some really nice uh, head side to side movement. And then the neck joint can move up pretty far. It's really tight. Now, one thing you want to do is be careful with these joints because, you know, I push a little bit too hard on them and I get a tiny, tiny bit of paint rub. You can 
camera's barely picking it up, but that's something you do want to be mindful for, and then the joint can move down a little bit. So the Zuni Ceratops can almost have its face touch on the ground like it's browsing, then moving down from the front legs, they can move backwards and forwards. There's a little bit of a pivot at the shoulders. The front legs can move forward. The joints on these figures are really tight, and this joint also can rotate 360 degrees if you wanted to do that for some reason. And same thing with the feet. Get a little bit of tiltage at the uh, ankle or wrist. This is the front foot. And the front foot can rotate 360 degrees. Then you have a joint for the mid part of the body, which you can get some nice uh, hip swingage going on. And then the back legs can move backwards and forwards quite far. Actually, they could do it 360 degrees. And same joint on the knee. You get a little bit of bend at the knee and you can almost just extend it fully straight and then you have another joint at the ankle which can rotate 360 degrees and same thing with the back feet they can pivot out and rotate 360 degrees and the tail can go from side to side up and down and rotate 360 degrees if you choose it to so yeah the articulation on these figures is 19 points of articulation is pretty good so you can definitely get some cool poses with these figures all right, let's move on with some comparison. First up is one of the human figures from the Jurassic World line. Here it is with John Hammond. Now these three and three quarter inch figures are roughly in that 118 scale range. So they do scale pretty well with the Ceratopsian series. And next up is, let me just slide him out so he doesn't fall off his base. Here is one of the Beasts of the Mesozoic Raptor series. Here it is with the Dromaeosaurus. And next up is an old school articulated dinosaur. Here it is with the old Rosaurus Carnage Collection Styracosaurus. I always say where I bring them out. These Beasts of the Mesozoic are far superior. These Rosaurus ones were great back in the day, but man, they suffer from really weak joints and pins, and they are very, very prone to breaking. And next up is the Mattel Dual Attack, the Pseudoceratops, which I custom repainted. And next up is the always too small Mattel Triceratops. Can't wait for the uh, adult Triceratops to come out in this series. That thing is going to be a monster. And here it is with one of its wave mates, the juvenile Centrosaurus, which was recently reviewed on the channel. And here it is with one of the larger figures in this Wave 1 series, the Medusa Ceratops. So final thoughts on the Zuni Ceratops, just like the rest of the series, the figure is top notch. The paintwork, sculpted in detail are absolutely fantastic. The articulation is great. That's why I like about articulated dinosaurs. You can mess around with them. They're not always stuck in static poses that you get from other companies. Even though those figures look great, I just like the option of posing my figures a little bit different. So yeah, just like the rest of the wave, definitely a figure you should definitely be adding to your collection. And like I said at the beginning of the review, this figure retails for $29.99, which makes it the most affordable figure in the line. So if you didn't pick anything up from this series and you want something from it, definitely go with the Zuni Ceratops. It's the easiest one on the wallet and you will not be disappointed with it. And I'll leave a link in the description to Creative Beast Studios if you'd like to pick this figure up for yourself. So that will do it for the review. I'm just going to keep Chugging along on the Ceratopsian reviews. I have a few other new things coming in this week. So there should be some other reviews sprinkled in between these Ceratopsian reviews. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.